Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock using the non-constant dividend growth model for a stock at the end of 2018. And we're going to use the expected dividends for this stock for the next five years. So this is a non-constant growth period. And then we say at the end of 2023, the dividend is expected to grow at a constant rate at that point of 3%. As a result, we're going to determine the horizon value at the end of 2023 because that's the point in time at which the constant growth rate begins. So let's do that first. Um, we'll do use the constant growth model here, which says that the horizon value is equal to the last dividend paid, so that's $3.80 at the end of 2023, multiplied by one plus the constant growth rate and then we're going to take that and divide it by the required rate of return for the for equity to minus the constant growth rate and that's going to give us a value at the end of 2023 of $43.49 so now we have all the information we need to calculate the intrinsic value of the stock at the end of 2018 for this, we're going to use the NPV function in Excel. So I'm going to put in here equals NPV. Our rate, our discount rate is the 12%. Our values, for this I'm going to highlight all of the values except for the dividend in 2023 and I'll explain why here in a second. So we have all these dividends. And so for 2023, what we're saying is that we're gonna receive this dividend of $3.80 plus this horizon value of 43.49 because that's what we can sell the stock for at the end of 2023. So you can see here in my MPV function that I've got the rate, I've highlighted these cash flows, and then I put a comma. And what I'm telling MPV is, and then the next cash flow is this. So the next cash flow at that point is $3.80 plus 43.49. So the intrinsic value of the stock at that point in time is $35.06. The next thing I wanna do is take a look at how a change in the required rate of return for the equity and the constant growth rate affects this intrinsic value. In order to do that, I've got a two-way data table that has in the top row, the different constant growth rates I want to apply to this model and the different required rates of return for equity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this cell equal to the intrinsic value of the stock at the end of 2018. I'm going to highlight this entire area now and then I'm going to go to data, what if analysis, and then data table. So you have two inputs here. The row input cell, so this is the row. The row input cell is then going to be the constant growth rate right there. And then the column input cell, so here are the columns and that's the required rate of return for equity, is going to be this cell here. And, and what's happening then is for each cell in this table, Excel is recalculating the value I have here the 35.06 using the uh, required rate for equity here and the constant growth rate for that cell. And so this is what my resulting table looks like. What's really critical here is that this value and as a result this value is all calculated using these reference cells that we're telling it to change because if I put in here um, for the rate 0.12, well then nothing would change with regard to the required rate of return for equity in this table. Um, just one thing to point out on this table is we can see what happens to the price or the value of the stock as our required rate of return for equity goes up, the value goes down because that's the discount rate. And as we increase the growth rate, it goes up and up and up until it gets to this point. Now the reason why it's an error term here is because we're, we have our required rate of return for equity equals to 7% and our constant growth rate equal to 7% 
For the horizon value, if that were true, the answer for the horizon value would be undefined because the denominator in that equation is the required rate of return for equity minus the constant growth rate and setting them both equal to seven would result in that being zero. And so you get an undefined answer at that point. That's it for the video. Please let me know if you have any questions.